Welcome everyone. So happy that you're joining us today. My name is Mercedes Biedra and I am the Director of Multicultural Education here at the UC Davis Health System campus. I work in health equity, diversity and inclusion and have run pathway programs for all STEM fields, including medicine and nursing for the last 20 plus years. We have an esteemed panel today to talk about pathways to nursing, uh, which is quite daunting, but you know, we want to get that clarity out for um, you uh, to engagement and hope that you will put, be part, partaking into the field of nursing. So I'm going to pass the baton to uh, our panelists and I'll have them introduce themselves. Hello everyone, good afternoon, and thank you so much for, for having me here today. Uh, my name is Madeline Verzola. I am the Manager of Admissions Student Services Outreach at the Betty Irene Moore School of Nursing at UC Davis. Um, I've been with the school now for about five years. It's amazing, time flies. Um, I've been with the school for five years. Previously, I was working at um, UCLA David Geffen School of Medicine um, with, the uh, with the Department of Pediatrics and uh, working with uh, the med students and residency programs. So I've been in higher education for uh, about 10 years now and 10 years specifically with um, in admissions for, for, for graduate programs. So it's, it's so great to be with everyone today. Thank you. Thanks, Madeline. Darius. Hi, everybody. I am Darius Lucian. I am a faculty member at Sacramento City College te teaching in the senior nursing class of the ADN program. I have been at Sacramento City College for 25 years now. I um, and also do global nursing where I'm on a team that travels outside of the country, country once a year since um, I think we've been doing that since 92 now, usually to the continent of Africa and, and just do nursing over there and bring it back and do whatever I can here, the team does. Um, I think that's about me. I have my um, uh, bachelor's in nursing, my master's in nursing from UCLA and uh, specialized in cardiology. Thank you. Dr. Ward Sullivan. Hi, everyone. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you for inviting me to this panel. I am, let's see, I've been in nursing 35 years and in academia about 13 years and in the role of the program director of the entry-level master's in nursing program, pre-licensure, for four years. So I've enjoyed uh, the various uh, avenues in nursing. My specialty has been cardiac nursing, of course, over the years. And I have um, conducted research looking at the symptom science, of course, symptom clusters in patients with breast cancer. My passion is with um, African-American women and heart disease and how they understand and recognize those symptoms that often get misdiagnosed, uh, undiagnosed, or overlooked. So thank you. Um, I think that might be it. Thank you. And then uh, Dr. Akala. Sorry, I had to take myself off mute. <laughs> so welcome, and uh, my name is Dr. Alcala. I've been in nursing approximately 28, 29 years. Part of that started as a CNA, worked my way up through student intern and so forth. Um, my background is diversified. I've done everything from acute care to clinic, to public health, um, to education. Uh, probably the majority of my clinical time has been in the ER trauma, um, critical care aspect of it all. I currently teach at CSU Sacramento. I'm an assistant professor there. I've taught at CSU Stanislaus. I've taught at Modesto Junior College at Samia Merritt University. And I've been and pretty much in teaching students since 1999, where I started out as a clinical um, instructor and have loved it all this time. Um, I would say that my passion, honestly, is working with the students in Hispanic population, both the undergraduate and graduate, as I teach in both capacities right now, in trying to improve patient care. And everything I've ever done in regards to being an instructor, which is actually why I became an educator, was always to improve the patient outcomes. Um, I've had family members very early in my career that, that died because of inadequate care. So that's always been my driving force. And I will say that the one thing I'm super passionate about nursing, I love this profession. 
those of you that are looking into this profession, I would never ever do anything else but what I'm doing right now and could see myself doing this 20 more years, even though at some point in time I will retire. <laughs> so anyways, that's about me. Well, thank you all. And so attendees, um, the Sustain panel has pathways into their specific educational uh, pathway from the community colleges to private to the CSUs to UCs. And so we want to just kind of just, you know, make it a clearer path for students who are attending possibly high school and community college on this entire pathway uh, to a bachelor's in nursing from the CNA, someone had utilized the um, acronym CNA, and correct me if I'm wrong, that's a certified nursing assistant. So um, some of those acronyms we could say a little more just so that folks uh, can understand. And um, on all the way, all the way up to the doctorate in, in nursing. And so from your experiences as you work with students and your own histories in the profession, um, what are some of the things students can be doing now? Now, in their high school, in their early college years, to uh, really set themselves to this path in nursing. And I'll just open it up to the panel who'd ever like to take that question. Sure, I'll go ahead and start if that's okay. Mm -hmm. I would say that um, my school, I forgot to mention, is Samuel Merritt University College of Nursing. And so what we look for in the applications um, of our students is that did they volunteer? How serious are they about this field of nursing? And I think it's just really key to make sure they volunteer first, the students, so that you have a clear understanding of what nursing and what healthcare is really all about. Um, sometimes you may watch some of the shows, Grey's Anatomy or some of the other TV shows that really don't truly depict this work, um, we become quite intimate with our patients. We really get to know quite a bit about them. And so understanding the role of a nurse, it's really not just about dollars because you can make quite a bit of money, but you have to be able to look at the human side and have compassion and care. So understanding and volunteer work first and then apply for the nursing programs. I think that will really be a, a good start for you. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'll go ahead and step in, uh, and I concur with Dr. Wells Sullivan. Um, the biggest thing I've, when I've worked with a lot of high school students, is they have exactly the idea of what nursing is, and when they actually get out there, they realize that it's very different from what they perceived because there's so much more. There's a lot of stress involved with it. There's a lot of emotional tug about it. There's physicality to it, and so, um, you know, I encourage students to like Candy Stripe, which are Virginia volunteering or something exactly that in the community during high school to really see what exactly it's all about. Um, the other aspect of it, unfortunately, which is a hard part is the academics is incredibly important. We know that this is a competitive field. And you know, when I advise students, it's like from day one, the minute you get into college, you honestly have to focus on the academics. I wish I could say that it's not just you know, GPA driven, but because there's so much competitiveness and impacted in all the nursing schools, which means basically the nursing schools are full, especially in California that is a driving force. And so that's probably the, I would say the most negative aspect of trying to become a nurse, um, but passion is gonna drive you. But um, so again, volunteering, speaking a different language always helps as well. So being fluent in that, you know, having personal experiences. So when you actually write out the application and you're looking forward, that all makes a big difference. Being a local person. So like in the Sacramento area, the San Los area, that also gives points. So there's various things you can do, but I've, definitely dealt with students that have come from Southern California, from different states, because they're trying to get into nursing schools. Um, but it just really is reviewing what needs to be done when you're looking at the school you're interested in and making sure you check off all the marks that they have there, because that's going to give you the best advantage. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I like to say from the high school level, if you talk to your instructors there, maybe they are working on some type of project that you can be a part of, or they're bringing people from the community into the school, um, maybe doing CPR or something, and you can be a part of that. Then any of your family members, even your own physician, you may ask them, do you know of any place that I can go or do something to help out? You might be able to help in research somewhere. Um, you might even be able to help in some of the vaccines 
clinics. I know I did a lot of those with my students this past summer. And we had, uh, I even had some middle school students helping me just maybe just uh, in the administrative part of that. So you can do a lot of things. Um, also keep a journal of things that you like to do. Who are you? What do you really like and want to do as far as nursing? And just write those things down. I think that'd be really helpful for you. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll just go ahead and add, everyone on the panel made excellent points. Um, one thing I think that it is important for you all to keep in mind is that, um, like the, this uh, session is, there's different pathways to nursing. So um, you might be interested in uh, getting your ADN, your associate's degree in nursing, your bachelor of science in nursing, or um, a master's level program like what we offer. And so each of those different pathways have very different um, admissions processes. Um, and so as we uh, continue in this session, um, I'm sure we'll speak a bit more about it, but I, like, uh, applying to UC Davis is a lot different than perhaps applying to um, a BSN program. Um, so I just want to point that out that it's so important to also uh, kind of keep in mind which type of program you uh, would like to enter and really do your research to see what their specific requirements might be. Mm -hmm. So important, um, really understanding which campus you want to start and what our resources are available. I know when I was a student, I needed to go to the community college and the community college has so much to offer. And so um, if that's where our students are, know that that's a path that you can take. And even as we progress through the community college, we can still transfer to CSUs and UCs and to other campuses uh, to get into the nursing program. So can uh, the panelists talk a little more about their education that they provide at their campus? And we can start with uh, Darius. Yeah, so I'm at uh, Sacramento City College, and that's where you can get an associate degree in nursing. Um, I like uh, the associate degree in nursing and like to talk about it because some people aren't able to pay the amounts of money that you need for your bachelor's um, degree to start off with at a CSUS. And you can easily transition into that from a associate degree level. So on the associate degree level, you'll come in and you'll take your general prerequisites that are required by the school. And then when you're finished with that, um, some uh, specialized nursing courses, the sciences and all, um, and then you would be ready to apply to the nursing program. At uh, the associate degree level, we look at a 3.0 in all of the required sciences. You must have a 3.0. And then in all the other general classes, a 2.5 GPA. Again, I like the associate degree because some people are not as confident where they are and the academic level. Um, sometimes coming out of high school, we're real concerned about, am I good enough in math? Am I good enough in writing? And you can kind of build on that starting at the associate degree. So you come in, you um, do that general education, looking and flying for the uh, nursing program. And we have three types of nursing programs at the associate level or community college level. And that is the RN program, um, the LVN program, a licensed vocational nurse. And some people are already licensed vocational nurses and then they can continue onto the RN track. That's a really fast track because if you're an LVN, then you come in the summer and do five weeks of a transition program and then go right into the last year of the RN program. So that's really nice. It takes 18 months to be an LVN and two years to be that um, licensed RN. Then once you finish that, um, uh, associate degree are in, you can transition into the last year of the BSN. So take two years in the BSN in um, Sac State. And we have a collaborative program that you can transition easily into Sac State. We now also have a contract with University of Phoenix that you can transition into um, their program and with Grand Canyon that we can transition because Really today, you need your bachelor's degree in mm. nursing. Everything is moving towards the bachelor's degree in nursing. 
So you want to get that associate, but continue on to get that. And we really um, highly recommend our students to do that. And many other um, schools have been trying to contract with us to um, merge our students into their programs. Um, so you can do that um, with the associate degree. So just additional two more years, which if you went directly to the four-year program, you know, you're there. You take the same licensing examination as the two-year degree and the four-year degree. Um, and, uh, and then you still have the same license whether it's two or four years, but you've built knowledge and uh, you're gonna add in the four year, you're gonna add more leadership, you're gonna add public health. And I'm sure we'll talk about that. So I, I think that transition is very helpful to help build your confidence. I think it's very helpful to, um, for job financial reasons. Um, you can work as an RN um, with that two year and then continue on. But we must say many hospitals now are requiring that bachelors to come into hospital. But I have to get a shout out to UC Davis. We are in a program that they are accepting our associate degree nurses to um, come in as long as they're proving that they're in a collaborative program. Okay. Oh, that's, beautiful. that's beautiful. Wonderful. And so those first two years at community college level uh, fees and then moving on um, is so critical. And you've had your program with Sacramento State for it's tried and true for how long? Oh, my. It's over. I'm sure it's uh, definitely 20 years oh, yeah. with Sac State. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. time gets away from me, but yeah, it's been a <laughs> tried, while. Yeah, tried and true. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I'll pass it to the next uh, panelist. Um, I'll go ahead and pick up just because since you talked about Sacramento State. So Sacramento State, again, is a four-year program and there's various ways of entering to the um, nursing program. One, a lot of people misunderstand that just because you apply to the CSU system or even a UC system as a nursing major does not automatically make you a nursing major. That's just what you've declared yourself. And we probably have easily like over a thousand students that are coming in as pre-nursing when only approximately 160 per year actually get into the program. So you may come in with that degree as or as your intended major, but you still have to, once you're in the CSU system, if you come in as an undergraduate, so it's like 18, 19 years old out of high school, you still actually have to apply to the nursing program to get into the program. Again, it's very competitive. It does. It is based on grades. Um, our GPA, I think the last time I looked, I'm sorry, I just, I've looked at it just recently and I can't remember, I think it was like a 3.3 or something along that lines, but classically our GPA to get into the nursing program <clears throat> usually runs about 3.8 to be very honest with you so even though you meet the minimum honestly by the time we we go through all the applications i would say like the lowest is usually about a 3.8 gpa which again i know is not fair as far as that goes and i agree with that 100 percent um but we have several entry programs we have one that comes in again as an undergraduate coming in as a you know 18 19 year old taking the prereqs which is like the microbiology all the typical sciences you need and then they apply to the nursing program we also have those that have done their associates and gotten all the undergraduate program classes that they need like microbiology, biology, and then apply over to the CSU to get their bachelor's. And then we have um, the third entry program, which is where we have the students that have already graduated from the associates with the IDN, which is associate degree in nursing, and they're coming in and taking classes to get their bachelor's of science in nursing. So there's kind of like three different programs that can come in as far as that goes. They all merge into one except for the ADN going in for the BSN. They're a different group altogether which is a great group to work with. I love working with those students actually. Um, so the, the, you know, the part of it is, you know, depending on which way you come in is making sure that you're looking at the degree requirements. Um, when you get a bachelor's, what you're primarily getting is your, um, you have to take other classes. It's not just a nursing program classes. So you're taking, you know, extracurricular classes. You're taking like the psychology. I mean, just, just a variety of classes in order to graduate because you're really graduating with a degree from a university. It just happens to be that the emphasis is nursing. So you still have to meet all the degree requirements that the university puts on every single student, whatever their major is. So it's just understanding that that you have to do. So sometimes in the nursing program, which is really intense, you may be taking like one more upper division class, or you may be taking you know, some of those basic classes to, in order to qualify for the degree. 
So when you finally complete it, you're actually going to be graduating with a bachelor's. But again, the emphasis is nursing. So you come out with a bachelor's of science in nursing. Um, that you know process again setting for the NCLEX is the same I mean all of our programs that we're going to talk about it's the same NCLEX there's no difference you still have to pass the same test so however you get there is not going to make a difference it's just a matter uh, um, as stated before the, a lot of the hospitals are looking for BSN graduates now or at least in a program where you're getting your bachelor's of science in nursing and you know UC Davis is a phenomenal facility and I mean I think in general they do a great job but you know they are the um, you know, looking for the BSN, Kaiser is looking for the BSN. So the encouragement is no matter how you get there, whether you start as an LVN, you know, as a certified nursing assistant, LVN, and then ADN and RN, eventually the goal is for you guys to get the bachelor's because that's um, probably what we're going to be leading towards. So that's kind of where our program is. Again, you know, we do have, a um, there was a qualification process that goes with that. And um, we do have a lot of students that are coming in that have already done their undergraduate at the at the junior college because it is cheaper. <laughs> That's for sure. It's a lot cheaper to get your classes done, especially if there's financial constraints, which are really oh, difficult. Yeah. Um, and then they come in and they just finish like that last year because our nursing program is a, is a concentrated of like two years continuous concentration, which is pretty heavy. So they just come in and do the last two years and get their bachelor's. So, thank you, Dr. Kala. Dr. Ward Sullivan. Thank you. You know, it's so interesting when we think about the different program offerings in nursing. And I have to say, I think back when I graduated from my associate degree in 1985, we were talking about the future of nursing even then, that the entry level should be a baccalaureate nurse, right? But yet we continue on. So it's, it's still fascinating that the conversation's there. But I think I agree with the other panelists. It's becoming more and more true uh, and real that these hospitals are looking for a BSM. So at Samuel Merritt University, we have four campuses, Sacramento, Oakland, San Mateo, and Fresno. And so uh, for the Oakland campus, we have a BSM program, master's in nursing, case management, and we also have master's for FNP. We have a doctoral program for straight DNP, as well as a um, DNP FNP. That also holds true for Sacramento. And we have an ABSN accelerated BSM program at both Oakland, San Mateo, as well as Sacramento. Fresno, we're just getting started, so we're building the program offerings there. Our BSM program, um, it's, it's actually a two-year program, so while you can complete your prerequisites at the junior college or another university and then transfer into the BSM program, that's possible. Others will um, transfer from out of state. We have quite a few students that come from out of state to our programs. For the entry level master's in nursing program, those are our second degree students. We call them ELM students and they have a degree in something else. Maybe they couldn't get into the nursing program or they just weren't sure about nursing or they got into maybe uh, public health and they thought maybe I should have my RN license. And so we accept those students as well. And while our website says 3.0, as Dr. Akala said, you know, it's really the GPA, those that get admitted, it's pretty high, 3.5 and above. However, not to deter you if your GPA is not there, because we do offer, we look at students holistically. Mm -hmm. So we have the holistic admission process. And if I read an application where a student has a 2.7 GPA, for example, once I read their story, their goal statement, it speaks to our heart and soul. And we say, you know what? They may not have the GPA that's high. However, let's look at their story and, and invite them in for an interview because we do uh, interviews for a master's program. And once you see this student interviewing and engaging with others, then, you know, we add extra points and that student does get in. They do well. Some of the students might need extra support. So we do have student support services. We have testing support services. We offer a lot of support to help the students because we believe if we let you in the program, we are confident that you will be able to graduate in the program. Some students have to repeat a course and that's okay. If the journey is slightly different, we encourage the students to not feel discouraged or that they're less than because they have to repeat a course. We just provide that opportunity to help them repeat the course. It's very intense. The accelerated BSM program is 12 months. So it's year round, very fast. 
but it's remarkable the pass rates for that cohort of ABSN students is always 96 to 98 percent. We use HESI as our testing um, um, products, you know, platform for us, and we um, provide lots of practicing for those students. For the BSN students, um, the GPA, I believe, maybe is 2.7, I believe. I'm not quite sure. It's on our website, though, so I apologize if I don't have the information correct. And those students do very well. It's a two-year program. The ELM students, it's also one year of pre-licensure, so it's pretty intense, um, and we help get those students through, and then they branch off into the case management track or the F&P track. And I will just say, at least for Samuel Mayer, there is a position statement from the National Nurse Practitioner Organizations that there's a move from having the direct entry into practice with a master's, correct? So now they're looking at a DNP. So as we say, get that BSN, the future of nursing report that just came out for 2020, 2030 is really looking at how do we transition and get those nurses to come up with a doctoral degree? So you can start with the BSN, which is fine, or the ADM, but having your mind and goal of future is definitely either a PhD, DNP, and for some EDD. Uh, my background is PhD because I know that we, at the time that I entered, we did not have a DNP program. And so we don't want to discount the PhD folks because we need nurse scientists who are conducting the research, but we need the DNP folks too, so that they're actually carrying out what the science says and providing this base of evidence-based practice. And so we need all degrees in nursing. So whatever you, wherever you start, it's okay because you should have this long longevity rather in nursing as many of us have been in the field for quite some time. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Madeline. Yes, thank you. So um, at UC Davis, we offer four graduate programs, um, a doctoral program, nurse practitioner program, physician assistant studies, and then our, our master's entry program in nursing, uh, which I'll speak about today. It's very similar to um, the three level nursing uh, program uh, that Dr. Ward Sullivan uh, was just speaking about. Um, so it is our master's entry program in nursing. Um, graduates of that program, it's a pre-licensure program. So graduate, graduates of that program will be eligible to take the NCLEX to become an RN and they will receive their master of science in nursing. It is an 18 month accelerated program. Um, and again, prepares you to be an entry level nurse. It is a great route for people who have already earned their bachelor's degree, and perhaps it's um, in another discipline. We've had students with um, non-science backgrounds, uh, like business or even art history, uh, just as long as they take it, meet all admissions requirements, which includes um, a number of prereq courses, uh, which also includes some science courses like chemistry, microbiology, anatomy, um, and physiology. Um, but so it's an 18 month accelerated program. Um, we have one admission cycle per year. Uh, so applications actually just opened uh, last week um, and the, the deadline will be November 1st. And uh, we have a one cohort that starts each year, every year in the summer. Um, because it is a graduate program, we do require a bachelor's degree. Um, back to what my colleagues were saying about GPA, we require a minimum 3.0 bachelor's degree GPA and a minimum 2.7 in all of the science prerequisite courses. Um, three letters of recommendation, your statement of purpose. One thing I do want to mention, uh, similar to Samuel Merritt, is that we take a holistic approach to our admissions process, um, similar to that program. And so while academics is obviously very important, um, we are looking at things beyond academics. We wanna see who you are as a person beyond that, your volunteer work, your um, personal experiences that have uh, guided you to, to this point in your, your path to becoming a nurse and why you wanna become a nurse. And so we're looking at all of these different things. And so perhaps, if you're not as strong um, with your GPA, you might be have strengths in other areas. And so I think that is so important because we're really looking um, at applicants that can, that have, um, 
offer diversity to, to the cohort, um, diversity of thought, uh, diversity of different perspectives, because that just really adds to um, the classroom conversation and adds to your uh, learning experience because you learn so much from your classmates and really contribute in that way. Um, so I just wanna set out that although academics is so important, it is, we are looking at other areas of your application. One thing I do wanna point out is that um, the essay, the essay is, is a, um, a part of your application that you have complete control over. You think about things like grades you've earned, those grades are on your transcript, they're, they're permanent, unless you retake it and then you um, replace that grade. But the, the essay is a, an area that you have control over and then you could really tell your story and make yourself stand out. And so it's so important as you're, you're writing your essay to think about, what led me to this point in my career and why do I want to become a nurse and what can I do to round out my application? Know that someone else has already looked at all of the, the other parts of your application, like um, your grades, your volunteer experience, your um, different awards. And so this is um, the area of your application that you're actually able to um, tell more about your story and we're able to get to know you better that way. Thank you, Madeline. And I want to open it up uh, to the students who may have questions. Just raise your hand um, or put your question in the chat. Um, this is your time to get your questions uh, met. So Victoria has her hand up. Go ahead, Victoria. Hi, everyone. So my name is Victoria. Um, I actually, my questions will probably be geared more towards um, the programs like the entry level because I already have my bachelor's degree. Um, just a little bit of background. So I, I didn't know I wanted to go into nursing until after my second year um, of undergrad. I did my undergrad at UC Davis as an exercise biology major. So with the sports background in my mind, I thought physical therapy, I wanna still be around that setting. Um, Luckily, because it's a research institution, they offered a lot of internships where we could be exposed to a lot. So I did an internship at the OBGYN clinic um, through UC Davis. And that's what I actually decided I wanted to go into nursing. And I had really good relationships with the nurses. And so I guess my question is because I already have my bachelor's, um, I'm currently actually in the UC Davis um, pre-health post back program because um, my GPA wasn't as competitive. So I'm trying to find other avenues to make sure I will apply and be competitive. I know I can't change my undergrad GPA, but I liked the idea of the holistic approach. Although I do want to prove that I can handle rigorous um, science course load, which is why I'm doing the post back. What are some um, tips or advice that you would give to someone like me who is recreating that upward trend, but also still want to provide that holistic approach outside of grades and experience in clinical settings. Okay, I guess I'll, I'll go ahead. Congratulations. <laughs> it's never too late to choose nursing as a career, of course, at all. Anyone can enter at any age. So I think it's, it's wonderful that you're making that, that change and we, we welcome you. I would say, as I mentioned earlier, volunteering is really important because that way we know that the student is quite serious about the field of nursing. So if you can continue to volunteer for the OBGYN clinic, maybe even some of the, um, you know, there were a couple of operations in, in the East Bay and um, operation, I can't think of the name, but those were for the unhoused uh, uh, community members in our, our local communities. And so they were housed in hotels hotels. And so students would go there and provide care. Maybe it's a dressing change, but maybe you're there to help, you know, usher in the, the organization of who's going where and the timing and all of that. There's something that you can do with those community-based sites. Um, if you find something, connect with those people and just, you know, schedule time to go in and volunteer so that you see what's happening out in the community and that you don't have this fear of this, like, oh, no, I'm not going to take care of that patient population because everyone has a need, right? We can't pick and choose our patients. So volunteer, maybe at the community-based organizations, some of the COVID clinics, um, doctor's office, maybe perhaps you can consider doing that. Some of the, the food banks, the volunteerism is key because we do provide extra points for students that 
um, or spending time volunteering, I think that would be helpful. And when you write your goal statement, think about what you're envisioning your role to be and contributing to the field of nursing currently, as well as five years out. And you know, sometimes we'll see comments such as, well, I've always wanted to be a nurse or someone cared for my, my loved one and this, is, this has helped me change my mind and now I want to be a nurse. Think about going more in depth. I want to become a nurse because of, you know, I've worked with this patient population in the community. I saw the work that nurses do and I'm going to advocate for that population in need. Nursing is huge on advocacy. So we look for those buzzwords. Will you advocate for those that are not um, able to afford the care, the degree of care that someone else would? So that's key. And also, I think it might be important to contact the school's alumni association and find out who are those graduates and can I connect with them and find out what was their nursing journey and then take a piece of that information that you learn from each one of those alumni folks and really think about where, how does this resonate with me and where do I find myself entering the field of nursing and what can I contribute to over the years? Key. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. I think Dr. Ward Sullivan um, covered that uh, perfectly and all of those are excellent things to um, improve your application. Uh, one thing um, I wanna add and I'll try to make it more broad uh, to address other folks who might be in your same situation is that um, really take a look at um, the school's requirements. There are, I'm thinking specifically like for our school, um, we require the minimum 2.7 prereq science GPA. Um, and while that's the minimum, our applicants do have, um, tend to have a, a higher uh, prereq science GPA than that. Um, but some schools, they'll let you, like uh, UC Davis, you are able to retake a course and we'll use the highest grade to calculate, calculate that prereq science GPA. So there's things like that that you can do to improve your academic record. Um, with you doing the post back program at UC Davis. I know that's a rigorous program. Uh, other applicants, prospective applicants in this, um, in this room, we know that life gets in the way um, and meaning it can impact how you performed in undergrad and maybe something was happening that you didn't perform as well as you know that you are capable of and that really impacted your GPA. We get it and we um, do what we can to um, keep that in mind as you are um, applying to our program. And we look out for things like if you completed a post back program and performed really well, um, or you are retaking those prereq science courses to improve your record. So we look at all of those things and um, it's not just, we don't say, oh gosh, they earned a C in chemistry and a C in A and P and they're totally not going to be considered now. No, there are things that you can do to improve your record. So really take advantage of those opportunities that are out there. Mm -hmm. So Madeline and Dr. Ward Sullivan, in the personal statement that uh, Madeline, you lifted up that that's a place of control, right? Being able to, yeah, I got an F in chemistry when I was a freshman, uh, but I was taking care of my siblings and working 40 hours you know, a week and trying to go to school full time. But what did I learn from that was time management and where could I put a boundary? And so um, I love that you said that that's where we have control. So we don't have to tell a long story, but you know, just concisely, hey, this happened. I learned from it and look at where I'm going now, right? And the maturity that's developed. Um, we do have another question in the chat from Fallon and it states, does any of the programs direct admit high school students? And if so, what requirements are emphasized that are different from transfer college students or college graduates? Um, I'll, I'll go ahead and answer that if I think I understand your question correct, Fallon. So are you saying that direct admit to the university or direct admit to the nursing school? Um, that I'm aware of, there are no programs that directly admit you into a nursing program. You have to have the prereqs, which is basically the initial classes, the microbiome, and anatomy and physiology, the um, chemistry, all the different classes that you need to do. So if you are looking into going into a school that has a nursing program, then the first thing you wanna do as a high school student is find out what those schools are. 
most of the CSU systems have a nursing program that you can get, um, you know, so you have to be admitted to the university first and that's step number one. So obviously you need to find the university you're interested in. Whether it's a private university, there are a lot of great private universities out there that also offer nursing. The only obviously ne negative with them is the expense, but a lot of times they do give you um, scholarships. So if you are looking into going directly into college at a, at a higher degree college, so we're talking about of getting a bachelor's right off the bat or even a master's program, you want to make sure you do that research prior to your senior year of applying because you know junior year we know oops, sorry junior year we know is the most um hold on one second i have some stuff going outside <laughs> let's see if i can quiet okay sorry about that okay. <laughs> it's like the, the world of zoom where things come in on the outside <laughs> Um, so anyways, so the goal is to, you know, high school, make sure you talk to your counselor and do the research and just find out what school is, has those programs, because then you apply to those universities. And like I said, if you want to come up with a higher degree, then you apply to those universities. Um, you do all the prereqs, but most schools and even the private universities, you still have to apply to the nursing program, even though you come in as a nursing um, major that does not automatically get you there. And so that's the hard part for a lot of students if they don't understand, they think because they're coming in as a nursing major, they're going to get into the nursing school. That's not necessarily the case. Um, so doing your homework on that, and you know, so that I'm aware of, at least in California, I don't know about other states, we do not have any direct admits into the nursing program. You still have to apply to the nursing program to get in. Um, some students, it takes a couple of years before they get in again, based on GPA, based on qualifications and so forth. So that would be the biggest step. Uh, the only thing that might cut down your time is if you do AP courses in high school, where you get some of those other classes, but that's probably the, I guess I would say the fastest way. Um, otherwise than that, um, you know, you still have to do the, the other core classes. So just a clarifying follow-up question, Dr. Akala, and to the panel, if a high school student completes their AP biology, that may be a requirement and they're transferring to the, any of your campuses, would that fulfill the requirement for nursing to get into the nursing program? Can you, can you accept AP science? Well, I, I know for our course, so what would happen is the person that does the AP evaluation like the, the basic classes, and I know there are some, some high schools that are STEM oriented or science oriented. Mm -hmm. So you can literally take like anatomy, physiology, things like that. Um, the other thing that I've, I've known students to do is actually while they're in high school, they take that physiology class at, at a JC. They do that class and then they bring it in and then transfer that over as a class is accomplished. So if you are one of those students that really is very much you know, a go-getter and willing to do that, the best thing to do would be to talk to your high school advisor as well as a college advisor and ask which classes come over and which classes can I get credit for. Um, the other mm -hmm. thing is actually looking at the university website. So whatever school you're applying to, see what classes qualify. And that's that's probably the hardest thing and that a lot of students coming in don't realize is truthfully spend that time researching the university's qualifications, expectations, you know, all that type of stuff, because you can waste a lot of time um, if you don't do that. And, you know, the goal is to get because nursing school is a long school time. So the goal is to get everything done as quickly as possible. So my encouragement to any high school student is if they're interested and I don't, you know, they can research tons of programs, look and see what do they need to do specifically to meet all those requirements. And then um, I know a lot of college universities that actually will gladly talk to high school students and set up an appointment and saying, this is what you need to do for you to go directly into this program. Um, same thing with nursing instructors. So the biggest thing that I would say for anybody who's going into college is do your homework, you know, research it, look at it, do the homework before you get there. So you have an idea as to what are the steps you have to take. Does your AP class qualify? You know, maybe it may not qualify. Um, like say, for example, if you do language, okay, well, that's one class less you have to take. So at that time, you can maybe double up on classes to get into nursing program faster. So it's honestly looking at what those AP classes qualify for and what credit can you get. And um, But I definitely have, uh, know students that, that while they're in high school, they're doing JC classes <laughs> and they're kicking some out. So by the time they get in there, they're like already almost a sophomore and almost ready to apply to the nursing program. So that would be my, um, I guess, information, recommendation, so forth. Beautiful. 
Anyone else? Okay. I just, um, I couldn't agree with that more, Dr. Alcala. It's so important for applicants to do their due diligence um, and really research the different schools that they're interested in. Reach out to uh, those admissions officers and um, ask your specific questions because they are, that's what they're there for. They're there to help and they want to support you through this journey to applying to nursing school. Um, I'll give you a specific example. Like our uh, school, we do not accept classes to satisfy the prerequisite requirements. Some schools do. So um, again, it's just so important to research a particular school's specific requirements. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And these are yeah. one piece, just so please go right ahead. The link yes. I wanted to add because I we talked about researching the different nursing schools. I also wanted to make sure that I just make this that make sure you look at the mission, vision, and values of that university to make sure it resonates or is aligned with what you believe in, okay? That's something to definitely keep in mind, very important as you um, continue on the nursing school trajectory. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So, and you know, you know yeah. I, I might yeah. add to all the schools of nursing are listed on the uh, BRN website. So if anyone wants to go to that site, um, and we can put that in the chat um, and, and look at any of the nursing schools in the state of California, you can find out what their requirements are and contact information for. And I'm, I'm sorry, I know it was the last thing because what you just said, it was so important. <laughs> it's all these little things that we think about. Oh, remember this. Um, you have to make sure there's a lot of nursing schools out there that are not accredited and they will be on a list and somebody will say, and I've had this happen and I feel really horrible for students. They're like, oh yeah, I got accepted to this blah, blah, blah nursing school and I'm super excited. It's going to cost me, you know, $40,000 and I get started. If it is not accredited, and accredited means it is not recognized by the Board of Registered Nursing in California. If it is not accredited, then you may not be able to sit for the board. So all those years you put in all that money you paid. And so definitely, if you really want to know about all the nursing schools out there, go to the Board of Registered Nursing, just Google Board of Registered Nursing, look up nursing schools, and it will give you from, you know, San Diego all the way to Eureka or however far we go. I think Humboldt State is the last place. I'm not sure. Um, that's incredibly important. There, a few years ago, so many nursing schools popped up because it was, you know, we, everybody was going into healthcare and they did not meet accreditation. And so many students were unable to sit for the boards. So my, my recommendation, there are tons and they're all great schools. Just look at that list, you know, look, maybe even jurisdiction. If you like, oh, I wanna go to Southern California or I wanna go up Northern California, whatever that can guide you. But look at that list before you decide where to apply to. So you get a good idea of what the Board of Registered Nursing recognizes as a nursing school. It also gives you the um, pass rate. So you can see like if a nursing school has a pass rate of 70%, eh, might not be the best place to go. It'll tell you schools are on probation. It gives you a lot of information. So that would be where the first place that I start, I would start. And the is really important because that's how well the school supports the student, as our panelists have talked about. Madeline. I thought you needed, I thought you were going to say something. Sorry, Madeline. Oh, yeah, no, I was going to um, add on to uh, when Dr. Ward Sullivan was talking about the mission and vision of the school mm -hmm. that just resonated with me because I think, again, that's so important because a school's mission and vision really guides the decision making um, at the school of leadership and how resources are allocated, um, which obviously just directly impacts the student experience. So it's so important that um, your goals really align with what the school's goals are. Thanks. And Doris. Oh, no, I'm good. Okay, uh, fantastic. I mentioned it. Mm -hmm. Great. So just in these last few minutes, as we've talked about the educational trajectory, um, you're, you know, ensuring that you're doing your due diligence, checking out every school possible. Um, once a student gets into and finishes their bachelor's, um, there are residency, nurse residency programs. I'm putting the link in for one with Kaiser Permanente. It's new, that just started over 2020. And then UC Davis also 
has a nurse residency program. And these programs are important because after your education, you want some guidance in your professional uh, development versus going in cold as a nurse and being able to have that mentorship with our departments. Um, there is an application process, but by this time you've mastered the application process because you've gone through every one possible through your education or your pre-health uh, education. And these are paid positions for an entire year. Uh, once you're accepted, you're paid for a year to get that mentorship, to get your skill development up. And then uh, it's more than likely that you would be offered a full-time position with either UC Davis or Kaiser Permanente. So make sure that you also are looking at what are they asking for. So as you're planning your uh, transition into nursing, your education and into the field, that you always have that and uh, you're striving that for those goals to, to get connected there. So just wanting to check in with our attendees. Are there any other questions? And if not, maybe some parting last words to our panelists for our attendees. I have one quick last question. Yes, oh. please, Victoria, okay. this is your time. Um, because I, it was mentioned that um, nursing is going more towards, or MSN programs are going more towards DNP programs. Um, for me looking to apply, should I be looking at DNP requirements as well, or I guess I'm trying to make sure of the direction that I'm headed for my future in education is setting me up for my career and where I want to be aligned with where nursing is going to. So should I be looking more towards DNP programs as well, or should I still be looking towards MSM programs, just to get, get an idea to make sure that I'm not like looking to go back to school again to keep up with the times that are changing. Great question. That's a great question. You know, I'm so glad you asked that question because I think right now we're on the cutting edge of making the schools of nursing or colleges of nursing making that decision. And so at Samuel Merritt, we're making that decision now, even though the national organizations, it's a position statement, it's not a mandate, but to make yourself more marketable as a second degree student entering a nursing program, I would say it might be beneficial to you to look for schools that do offer that um, DNP. If, if you're looking at F work, of course, there's no impact at this time for case management. So if you choose to be a case manager, then an MSN is perfectly fine. There's been no no comments yet on that. But if you're wanting to become an FNP, then I would say consider that, strongly consider that. Anytime you can enter a program and end out with a, a terminal degree, such as a DNP or you know, a PhD, I would say take that route. In the future of nursing report, there's still only a very small percentage of us, especially um, future nurses and nurses of color that have a doctoral degree. So you would enter that, that realm of that one to 2% and then help bring others along with you. So I would encourage you, if you have that block of time for Samuel Merritt, it's, it's gonna be four years and we will begin that program in fall of 22. So if you can spare additional four years, <laughs> you know, I would say go for it. Most of the DMP programs are online, so you can still work. Mm -hmm. And you won't be able to enter a DMP program without an, our basic, you know, general RN uh, degree first. I think some students forget and they think, well, I'm gonna be a family nurse practitioner. Forget the RN work, but the foundation is that nurse generalist, the foundation, right? We start there so we can understand how to best work with patients, with families and communities. So you have to have it under your belt first and then proceed on to the FNP uh, world, which is definitely needed too. So I would say, again, if that's the route that you're considering and you have that time, please consider um, the FNP. And if I can add one other piece that I didn't say earlier, in nursing schools, and I can just speak to Samuel Merritt, of course, there's also, not only is there a nursing shortage, there's also a faculty shortage. So if you have an interest in becoming a nurse faculty, look for universities that offer training. At Samuel Merritt, we do have what's called an NFT, Nurse Faculty of Tomorrow. And that's, um, we received a grant from HRSA, Health Sciences. And so we are beginning to train those students while they are students, how to work side by side with the faculty so they can learn how to teach and provide instruction to students. And so 
If you have an interest in, in doing both, which many of our FNP faculty do, they have their own practice as well as teaching. So you can consider both. Just wanted to put that additional thought in your mind out there. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And then I'd like to comment just because I am a DMP and I'm not a nurse practitioner. I'm actually a clinical nurse specialist. Mm -hmm. So the one thing that what I would say is um, again, and this, this is something I always advise students and you can, no matter what degree you get, whether it's a PhD, DMP, EDD, you can use it in any way. But sometimes identifying what is really your goal. So I knew a long time ago, I did not want to be a nurse practitioner, but I wanted to be focusing on policies and procedures and evidence-based practice. That was my love, my passion. Um, so I did a generalist as a DNP, but there's like leadership and administration in DNP. There's all various specialties. There's a, that's, you know, as in the last few years, it's come out much more. So it's really dependent on what you see your ultimate. If you want to be an FMP, then the DMP is the ultimate. That's where they're going towards. And so you want to do that. But you can get a DMP without being a nurse practitioner in a different field. And so I have a lot of colleagues that are in administration and they've done a leadership organization, doctor of nursing practice. Um, so, uh, you know, this is all back to doing your homework and you don't have to make the decision right now. Per I mean, you kind of have to have an idea, but it's doing what's out there it's uh, you know nursing is exciting there's so much out there there's I mean I feel like a candy shop to me I wish or a donut shop I should say <laughs> I wish love to do so many things and that's why I've done so many things in my career because I still want to keep doing more and more and more and so sometimes it's hard to focus down but my encouragement would be just kind of research what's out there but there's a lot of different programs um even from the type of nurse practitioner you want to become you know uh and so kind of like Google DMP, you know, DBMP programs, and you'll see that there's different types of doctor and nursing practice programs um, as far as that goes. And some schools that do definitely go from the FMP to the DMP, which is probably the ultimate what you would want to do if you want to go down that FMP route. Well, thank you to our panelists. Thank you to our attendees. We want you all in nursing. So we hope to see you at the rest of this conference and at our schools shortly. Thank you to our panelists. And we're going to be zooming into our next session. So thank you once again. Hope to see you all there. Bye.